Let's do another one of these uh, chemical equations. Um, this one is a physical change as opposed to a chemical change like the last one we did was. So a physical change can always also be represented through a chemical equation. So what we're saying here is sucrose. Okay, so this is like that video where we did the mixtures, made the sugar water. If you recall that from, what was it, chapter one? Um, or lecture set one. Uh, so sucrose um, is a solid, right, table sugar. And what's happening is we're dissolving it into water to make a solution, sugar water, where you don't see the actual particles of sucrose anymore. Okay? So again, uh, in this case, even though it's a physical change, we have these essential features of the chemical equation. So again, the first thing you want to notice is the reaction arrow. So that just tells us some process occurred, something happened. To the left of the reaction arrow, we've got the reactants. To the right, we've got the products. Okay. Underneath the arrow, Remember, if it's around the arrow, we say they're the reaction conditions. Usually, if it's shown underneath the arrow, especially if it's water or some other co common solvent, it is the solvent. And solvent just means what this reactant is dissolved into. So the major component of the mixture. Okay, and then the last thing is the state of matter. Right, so the state of matter. Just like the last one, this time it went from a solid, solid table sugar, to aqueous because, why? Because you can't see those particles within the water mixture anymore, the solution anymore. So, again, go back to that video or dissolve some sugar in water at home and make sure you understand this physical change. Okay? This is how you write it shorthand.